wait a minute, 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 wait a
Uh, there's already been issues with individuals that have been shot in Chicago by police. Uh, who uh, Remember the young man that was shot in the streets by the mm-hmm. Chicago police just walking? Um, yeah, that was a terrible. That was a that was a horrible thing. And you had Ron Emanuel, Emanuel, who was a part of the Obama administration, who be, who mm-hmm. left the Obama administration to become the mayor of Chicago, Illinois. And since he's become mayor, a lot, uh, he got voted in. People thought that he was going to come with uh, that he was going to make things better in Chicago, Illinois. That he was going to change everything. And I'm here to tell you right now. Uh, Ron Emanuel hasn't changed anything. If anything, uh, uh, the circumstances in Chicago have gotten worse and worse and worse. It's a damn shame. Um, and one of the thi- one of the subjects I'm going to bring up, Lions Den, is that um, the guns. How are these guns getting in Chicago, which are being used in these homicides? People are being killed. And I know from my research that you've got Indiana. Indiana, that's a neighbor to Chicago, Illinois. Is that right or is that wrong, Lions Den? That's correct. And what I've heard is that you've got guns that are be that are coming in from Indiana into Chicago, Illinois. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, so whether they're get whether they're being left in sh- uh, shipyards, train yards, or crates, these guns are getting on the streets, and as a result, people are being killed. Now, some people will say. Lions Den, that a lot of times black people, if it was white supremacists that did this or uh, people who harbor racism and hateful thoughts towards black people, that somehow people, we would be out in the streets marching. And I have to admit, um, if it's when, when black people, and when, if it's black people that are doing this to each other, at this point in time, this has got to stop. Yeah, uh, I believe Farrakhan in the Million Man March in 1995, he's told everybody to give a pledge. All right, he told everybody mm-hmm. to give a pledge, Lions Den, and we've gotten away from that pledge, Lions Den. With all with all that I've said, brother, uh, what do you have to add? What are your personal thoughts about what's happening in Chicago? Um, what are your personal thoughts? Well, and so um, it's basically like um, we have so we have like with unemployment in, or in Chicago is on the rise. We have programs being cut by Rahm Emanuel. Um, when you have you know when you have gang members who recruit more people in in their gang, like the GEs and the Vice Lords, and there's been rumors spreading around that part of that violence was part of uh, Chicago police killing black people along with. Basically, they said that they're doing it for harvesting, like for, for everything. So basically, what is happening is that it was, ever since Ronald Emanuel became mayor, the, the violence in Chicago became worse and worse and worse. And I was a little disturbed when I did my video yesterday of Ronald Emanuel's press conference because obviously he, he basically never cared about the, the black community, but now all of a sudden he felt some type of way and something and really insult the black community in a way. But the point I'm making it for is this is that Ronald Emanuel don't care about black, the black community. He don't even care about the people in Chicago. And obviously is that now what this, this what was happening this over the weekend is confirmed that um uh, and I agree with you on that too that the the, the guns has been coming in from Indiana to the city of Chicago, even though the state of Illinois had stripped the gun laws. And so this is what's so just so disturbing is that, you know, more people is having it's like selling guns, it's like having guns in the streets like right? selling candy in a candy store. So that is basically a disturbing trend at all. Yeah. Well let me let me just say this. One would argue there are people out here that would argue that you had violence in Chicago prior to Ron Emanuel becoming the mayor. And, yeah. and, and then before he became mayor, there, there's always been violence in Chicago. Now, let's look at the history of Chicago, uh, because I know people out there will want to blame the violence on black people. But uh, the truth of the matter is, Chicago has always been a violent city going all the way back to when you had the Al Capone and that whole gang out there. You had the Italians, you had the Irish and Jews, Jewish people. They were involved in what we would call unorganized, uh, 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 underground, uh, what do you call it, uh, organized crime. 
the mm -hmm. mafia. Okay, so you had the Tommy gun, the gangsters with the suits, riding, shooting people. So uh, uh, Chicago has always had an issue with violence. Another thing that we must take into account is that Chicago has had a history of having a corrupt police and political establishment. We know that there are black people that are saying in Chicago that there have been incidents in which they believe that police officers, as you said, are killing uh, black people. That's one theory that's floating around out there. Uh, there's another, there's theories that maybe it's gang related, so they're fighting over gang turf, control of the drug trade, who's going to control the turf in the, in, the, in the drug trade. But then there will, see, there will be some that would say, well, maybe there's people who are purposely trying to get the gangs to be against each other. You know, you can have provocateurs out there that can create this. Uh, there are some that say it's just simply black on black crime. Uh, there was an incident a few years back where people were saying that there were these what you call black sites in Chicago where you've got black people disappearing, being put in black mm -hmm. sites that are in Chicago. Okay. Um, there are people like you saying that are saying that the bot people are being killed for body harvesting. We know that uh, this could also be a part of a depopulation program. So we could run the gamut with many things, Lions, then to say what's going on. Uh, some would say this is a conspiracy theory, or this is all conspiracy, what we're talking about. We got to watch ourselves. Yeah. But at the end of the day, as black people, and I've been saying this, we can't afford to be fighting and killing each other when we have a real enemy in this world and by killing each other and hating on each other we actually make our enemy or those that we see as our enemy we make them stronger yeah now we're we're fighting each other in the streets we fight each other in our own families we fight each other on social media tearing one another down but do we go in strong against do we go in that strong against our enemies and I submit that we don't we talk no. a good game we give ourselves a pat on the back we get together in our groups and say what we're going to do but the reality is we know everything but we don't know a damn thing we say everything but don't do a damn thing we argue with one another. We argue with each other over philosophical beliefs, whether it be religion, you're a Muslim, you're uh, a black Hebrew Israelite, you're a Christian. So we spend all this, we spend a lot of time trying to figure out what divides us instead of figuring out what brings us together. And we beat our chest and say, I'm the best this and I'm the best that. But the reality is what happened in Chicago is the cold reality of what's happening. Black folks, from what I saw on the video, or the, footage, the footage that I saw, it was black folks being killed. It was black folks being in distress. It was black folks out there that were stressed out. It was the black, it was black folks. It was our community. And we have to ask ourselves, what's going on? Is it that black folks don't like each other? Do we... Is it that we're hating on one another? Is it part of the post-trans, uh, what do you call it? Uh, is it part of the post-slave uh, syndrome from the uh, trans-American slave trade? Is, is this a byproduct of us being brought over here as slaves? I mean, there are many, there's many things that we could label it, and there are those out there that would say, oh, you're giving an excuse. You're giving an excuse to black-on-black -black crime. And, I, and you know, Lion said, I don't like that term. Because mm -hmm. statistics have shown that black people commit crime on each other uh, um, just as much as white people commit crime on each other um, and any other group that live in close quarters to each other will commit crime on one another. Now, Lionson, you what do you have to say? If you have anything to say before I go further into these, uh, what's happening with homicides in Chicago, Illinois, and let me uh, stop for a brief commercial because um, you know the man that was president has something to say you're listening to Lions Den and
information, man, speak through the power. So, Lionston, do you have anything you want to say, brother? And I want to thank everybody out there once again that may be listening to us uh, in this broadcast. But, Lionston, do you have anything you want to add, brother? Um, of course, Info. Uh, um, I, I did another story about how Chicago police um, had this tractor trailer truck with, with like a with lot of shoes that try to set you know black people up, um, and it's really disturbing to see um, what the Chicago police is trying to do. They they have this tractor trailer, and I don't know if you check the check the other you heard about this one. They have this tractor trailer full of like I said, full of shoes, full of Jordans. Um, that's inside that traffic trailer. And, and what the uh, Chicago police is trying to do is to try to get young black males to go in that truck and try to steal the shoes so they can bust at them. For that, it was, it, I mean, and I, and I just did a video of that earlier today on how the Chicago police is trying to set these young black males and young black females up. But the people in, in the community already know what they're trying to do, and they, and they, and they had enough, and they spoke out about it. And so the thing of it is, is that we also have to understand that that what's going on in the city of Chicago is not just about the gangs itself. It's about how the corruption of the Chicago police is trying to set these black men and black women up for, 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 for because to try to increase you know the jail um, population. So, Info, your thoughts on that? Um, I'm glad you brought that up, brother, because I was listening to my man Joe Madison. I often check out his program. And he uh, was talking about that very thing that in Chicago, they have these trucks that they drive around to as a sting operation to get people caught up. So they'll go into the poorest areas of Chicago with these trucks. They'll fill it up with very expensive shoes, trying to set a young man or a young lady up or someone to go in there and take the shoes and then and try to uh, arrest them. Now, what I'm hearing that those operations that they're doing are illegal. You can't uh, do what we call trap and trap people. That's illegal. But uh, like I said, Chicago is what I'm what I'm hearing is that they continue to still do that. There was a brother that was on Joe's show today that said that he has been filming. I, I, I wish I would remember this brother's name, but he is on YouTube. There's a brother that has a YouTube channel that has been going around with his camera and filming the police doing these illegal sting operations with these trucks that they drive around, put in certain neighborhoods, put some trinklets inside of it to entice people. I know in Baltimore, in Lions Den, where I was born and I have family, they do stings where they'll have a car and they'll put money. You've seen this. They'll put money inside the car, like in the driver's seat or the back passenger seat. They'll have the windows rolled down. And... um. They're looking for you to put your hand in there and try to take the money, and that's a sting operation. Right. Um, but once again, like I said, Lionsden, there will be those that are saying that we're making excuses. But I, I, I'm willing to admit that you've got a combination of corrupt government that's involved in this stuff, corrupt police force. You've got some black uh, people, some black folks in Chicago who just don't mean any good to, to uh, towards each other, okay, that are out there killing each other, the gangs, uh, black folks hating on each other. You, I mean, you see the sort of hate and vitriol yeah. that you see, that, 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 that you've been observing on uh, even YouTube, all these social media platforms, how black folks hate on one another, jealous of one another, don't want to see one another improve, crabs in the barrel mentality, we've heard that. Well, I do believe that in Chicago you have an element of black folks in Chicago that hate on one another and killing each other. Um, I mean, anytime you can kill a mother and a child, anytime a baby is getting killed, innocent children are being killed, innocent senior citizens are being kin killed, innocent black people, just in general, innocent people, there is a serious problem. And I heard Ron Emanuel try to say that this is coming from the gang element. And you know he's not going to get up there and admit that um, that what's happening in Chicago is a byproduct of some of the problems that you have um, with the political system and the corruption of that town. Now we do know uh, Joe Madison. I think talks about he wants to. They're trying to put a a Benjamin Banneker. Uh, 
watchmaking company in Chicago to give young black people job skills. When you take away jobs, you take away opportunity, when you take away, when you have poor schools, which Chicago has very poor public school systems, when you have poor schools, no jobs, it's a haven for drugs and gangs to fester. And Chicago, like any major urban city, has these same problems. Now, Lions Den, let me, and I'm going to bring this up. Remember the, uh, let me just bring this up right now. Do you remember the Midnight, ba the midnight Basketball Program that was happening yeah. across the country? Do you remember, Lions Den, what was the Midnight Basketball Program all about? All about. Do you yeah, remember? Um, and if you don't remember, I'll remind everyone listening what the program was about. Go right ahead. Okay. The program was about when to bring kids to play basketball and stay out of trouble, stay away from games. Yeah. And then, go, go ahead. Not only was it about, well, in order to be a part of the Midnight Basketball Program, you had to go through job training, counseling. Mm -hmm. There was rules. See, a lot of people thought that it was just about playing basketball. It was about getting these kids off the streets from selling the drugs, get them some job training, get them some counseling, do some interventions with these young men to figure out why they're in the gang, why they're out there on the streets. Do you know when they implemented the midnight basketball program across the country, New York, uh, the Bay Area, San Francisco had the program. Baltimore had the program. Do you know when they had the midnight basketball program in this country that they said that statistically that crime within the urban environment went down? There were less shootings. There were less things happening because those very gang members and those very individuals that were out there doing these activities were in the program playing basketball, getting counseling, getting job training. Oh, it had an educational component to it. If you didn't have your GED, they were trying to bring in people to help these young men get their GEDs, get their education on. So it had that component. Do you know why Lions Den, they got rid of the program? No, that's no, I don't. They told most people that it was because of funding. No, they got rid of that program because it was working. And the wow. fact of the matter is they don't want us not, they don't want us, and I don't care who thinks this is a conspiracy theory, they don't want us working together. They don't. They want us to be killing each other. They want us to be hating on each other, because if we're hating each other, we're not fighting against the real enemy, and we're destroying each other, and we're doing the enemy's work for them. And therefore, it puts us in a jeopardy. So, what was happening is that they got rid of the midnight basketball program with the excuse that it was about they didn't have enough funding for it but the fact of the matter is it was too damn effective now let me read you something here about homicides that happen in general for the in Chicago thrown or just overall brother so 300 we have 365 days in a year homicides tend to peak in the summer months on the weekend and during the late hours. So you've got months, 60, 40, 20. Then you got days, 120, 100 days. This is a little chart that I have here. And then let me uh, bring this up. Shots, check this out. The census, this is a census of death. The majority of Chicago homicides are a result of gun violence, as we know. Shot, 487 people have been shot. There have been 32 unknown people that have been shot unknown. Stabbings, 23 stabbings, and other, meaning other types of, of people being hurt and killed, is about 10 others. There have been about 10 assaults and beatings, 70 beatings just this year is what's happening in Chicago. But the glaring number is that there's a 487 uh, shootings. And like I told you before, a lot of these guns are coming into Chicago from the outside. Now you have to ask yourself this. We as a black people, it's just like drugs. I don't care how much drugs you put in my community, how much guns you put in my community. If I don't pick the gun up and use the gun against my fellow brother and fellow sister, Lion's Den, then guess what? Nobody gets shot. 
So what is keeping black folks in Chicago from not wanting to pick up their guns and harm their own people? What is going on in the psyche and the environment in Chicago that gun violence is becoming, and I don't like saying this, a culture of the city, a culture of the environment? And I don't like saying that, Lionsden. What are your thoughts? Well, like you said, Info, I think that uh, it has to do with education, that like lack of education. Um, it also has to deal with uh, um, no jobs, no un unemployment on the rise up there. And the thing is, you have no jobs or less education. What can the children or the kids of Chicago do? Um, basically, they they're gonna feed the gang members. The gang members are gonna recruit them. They're gonna recruit, for example, the gangster disciples and the vice lords. Well, that's in Chicago. They recruit these gangs, recruit these kids, because they ain't got nowhere else to, nowhere else to go. They ain't got no, no, they cut their programs, and also they had to cut their programs that keep these kids off the streets as well. So you have all these things going on, and so the gang members going to take advantage of it. It's going to bring more people recruiting to their gang, and uh, there's going to be more, more people going to recruit to their gang, and more homicide is going to take place. And they, they try to take, it's also about turf war as well. So it's about the drug trade and the turf war um, in those areas, like in the south side or in the west side of Chicago. It's all about the turf war. So the thing of it is that you have no, they have no education. If you, if you, if, if unemployment is on the rise, if, if you cut the programs for the kids to keep, keep the kids off the streets, what are these kids going to do? They're going to bring, they're going to go ahead and bring, go ahead and join games and, um, and, and bringing guns to the city of Chicago and basically and destroy themselves. And that's the biggest, biggest problem that when Rahm Emanuel cut those programs for these kids, that's going to bring gang, gangs into the, you know, join these gangs and, and make them worse and worse. Now, let's hear what Ron Emanuel has to say, shall we? But the weather didn't pull the trigger. You can talk about jobs and they count, but in parts of the city where there aren't jobs, people did not pull a trigger. There are values. There are too many guns on the street, too many people with criminal records on the street, and there is a shortage of values about what is right, what is wrong, what is acceptable, what is condoned, and what is condemned. Father Michael Flager is a senior pastor of the Faith Community. So, that's Michael Flager, as you heard. Michael Flager. He joins me now from. So I want to stop that right there, folks. Michael Flager. Um, he's been in Chicago for years. He's been trying to fight against all this sort of stuff uh, in Chicago. He's a, he's sort of an activist. Um, he's a was he a Catholic priest? I think he's a white guy, Catholic, and he's been out there in Chicago speaking upon. A lot of these issues trying to work with gang members and um, what you've got going on is um, this is what I'm talking about uh, you had Steve Harvey and you had people like Jim Brown who has a program called American which works with gang members you have people like Kanye West going around meeting with Donald Trump saying that they were meeting with him to help the black community. And my question is, what has come of their meeting with Donald Trump? Nothing has come of it because we still have these problems going on. Um, Ron Emanuel tried to minimize the, uh, the uh, impact. He said that of impact of jobs and all these, he's saying, but in neighborhoods where people, there's the, in the same neighborhoods where they don't have jobs, and they don't have opportunity, no one is shooting. But he still did not say what he's prepared to do as mayor to fix these problems. He sort of he sort of points at the problems, but he's not really getting to the glue of the problem. Uh, he sort of you could tell he's frustrated uh, because he's been mayor for what? What is he serving? A second term right now, Lionston? Yeah, yeah. Hey, he's serving mm -hmm. a second term, and nothing has come of his mayorship. They're going downhill. Um, 
There's some that say you gotta. You, there's some that say that people have to stop being quiet. You know, you have the whole snitching rule. If you snitch, you're gonna be you're gonna be looked down upon. But if you got people killing our kids, I don't care if they're black, white, or whatever their race is. If they're killing our children, damn it, they need to be reported. They need to be brought into the authorities. They need to do something about this more aggressively. Now, I'm not an advocate of the slave patrols, which is which we call the police. I'm not an advocate of them. But at the end of the day, we can't have people. You can't have people running around in the city of Chicago, killing people, going unchallenged. And I bet you right now, there's probably a bunch of people in Chicago who know who did this. There's people in Chicago who know who did all these murders that have all these killings and shootings and injury to people's spirit is over this past. Week. There's some people who know, but are not willing to spill the beans because of fear of retribution, fear of being called a snitch, fear, fear, fear. You no, know, when your fear lines, when you have fear, it keeps you from doing the right thing sometimes. Let me uh, read off one thing, lines in. Where homicides happen in the city of Chicago. Though there are homicide records throughout the city, they are mostly concentrated in the south and west side. West side, as everyone always says. So, they're saying it's concentrated in the western side of Chicago. That is made up of what? A high population. That's a, that's a larger population of black people people in that area that you would consider black so the question is lions den what is it going to take for us as a people to put down these damn guns and to stop the nonsense in chicago what is it going to take it's going to take trust basically i think that the first of all the mayor ron man will need to come to the back have a, a open dialogue, have a, a, a basically tell the um, people in Chicago what his plan is going to be. Because again, will, it, will he create um, jobs? Will he have programs for kids to, 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 um, to like, like, a football, like a basketball program he was referring to? Will he, will he basically keep these kids off the streets away from gangs? And that's the biggest question. And unfortunately, Info, Ron Emanuel, in my opinion, ain't doing a damn good job as mayor. He doesn't. He didn't do a good job because first he didn't. He didn't care about the black community. But ever since over the weekend, yeah. when these homicides took place, now he started to have an emotional, um, emotional stuff going on with that. But my point is, Info, that what will what Ron Emanuel and his administration going to do with keeping these keep the violence on down? And unfortunately, again, unless he's going to come and his administration is going to tell the plan to keep these kids off the streets, to have a program with them, to get, get employment and jobs for them, they're going to continue joining gang, they're going to continue doing what yeah. they're doing, killing killing people out of nowhere. Okay. And so, and then also on top of that, they, they, the government Ray, when he didn't say on the press conference that part of the violence is from the police department. The corruption police department. Yeah. So basically, yeah. we're going to tell the we're going to tell the police, your own police department how to, how to stop corruption in that. So Ron Emanuel right now and for uh, and do a damn good job. Yeah, but I, I, and, yeah, but, but I don't want to I, I don't want to get but I don't want to make the focus lines then about pointing the finger at just Ron Emanuel. We already we know that Ron Emanuel has been a horrible mayor for Chicago. But yeah. but at the same time, black black people, we as a people, we gotta take some uh, some responsibility and take some accountability right. for some of this shit that's going on in Chicago. Black folks that are involved in some of this nonsense. So we can blame Ron Emanuel. Look, Ron Emanuel is what he is. He ain't gonna do anything. And I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't think that this is gonna be solved by politicians. It has to be solved by the grassroots community. People who have their feet on the ground in Chicago are the only ones that can fix this problem because it has to be a shift and change in the cultural ide ideology. There has to be a shift in our thinking, and that shift can only come through educating, informing, 
having people on the ground that people respect. I really do believe that you do have to have some intervention with the gangs. And I think they've tried the crap where they have the police talk to the gang. No, you have to have grassroots people who live in the community who have the respect of these gang members that are willing to get that, that these gang members will listen to. Something has yeah. to give. We have to be a, a we have to be a, a, a culture that protects our own instead of becoming uh, 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 instead of attacking our own. We need to protect our own. Let me read some. Let me just before we get ready, we're gonna get ready to, to end this broadcast soon. But let me read this. The um, let me just let you know something right here, everybody. The victims, the primary victims, the majority of the victims of homicide in Chicago are young black men. Now I'm looking at a graph. And that graph is all the way, has black men, not Hispanic. It's all the way to 400 in its reach. Hispanics at 54, not known ethnic groups at 52. Whites at 47. Blacks, basically, the majority of the individuals that are being killed in Chicago are young black males. This is something that is attacking young black males. And I'm here to argue the point that I don't think anyone really gives a damn about young black males, which is why... You don't see a this look look imagine if young white males were killing each other like this imagine if young white males were being killed this country would be in uproar right now they would be saying it's a state of emergency we got to stop what's happening it would be a state of emergency we as black people have to get our stuff together change the culture we the, the thugs and the individuals that are out there uh harming our people they've got to be dealt with you can't let people do this sort of stuff and run around lily dilly um unfortunately as we see on social media we can't even get along with each other on social media i'm getting to the point where i'm beginning to think lions in that there's no hope for us that we are hopeless and i hate i don't want to have that thought that we're a hopeless people but it's all i'm almost beginning to feel that we are hopeless because this kind of crap continues to go on year in and year out in Chicago and throughout the urban settings Philadelphia, Detroit uh, Baltimore where I was born D.C. I mean remember D.C. used to be considered the murder capital at one time right? Yeah, yes. So this is all a damn that. this is all a damn shame. It's got to stop. Now let me play something in our closing just a little bit of this this is why we are failing you had the Million Man March in 2000 I mean, you had the Million Man March in 1995. Let me take you back. 1995. Some folks may not have been born, may have been born in 1995. In 1995, Louis Farrakhan, the Honorable Louis Farrakhan of the Nation of Islam, had a march in which he brought black men together. That march proved one thing, that black men can come together collectively. There was no violence. Okay? Now, before I go into this audio... Let me break down the total. This is FBI statistics from 2016. FBI statistics, murder and manslaughter statistics. Here it is. White people are at 44.7% in committing murder and homicides. Black people were at 52.6%. Now, in the FBI statistics, and I've said this before, 69.6% of white people commit all all overall crime in America, while black people are at 26.9%. So all total crime, that includes homicide, robbery, burglary, molestation of children, harming your family, uh, aggregated assault, uh, property crime, um, fraud crime, uh, stealing property, vandalism, weapons, carrying weapons. I mean, I know in New York, they found most of the people who had weapons and drugs on them were white guys, not the black guys that they were stopping and frixing. So you got sexual offenses, drug abuse, all these different offenses. White people overall in their population, they rank at 69.6% compared to black people at 26.9%. So overall, Black people as a as a population, 13% of the population, we do not commit overall all these different crimes in an overall view that I just named and rattled off to you. Rape, uh, robbery, 
Um, we do lead slightly ahead of white people in homicides and manslaughter at 52.6% while they're at 44.7%. But that's only we're only a slight we're only slightly a little ahead of them. That's still pretty high. And white people overall have had a history historically, um, you know, through hist through historic Europeans historically, if you look at the history, have done things where they've invaded other cultures, done harm to other cultures, and we don't need and we and, and, and we know what the slavery system was like in this country from slavery to reconstruction to Jim Crow to all these to black codes to uh, the Ku Klux Klan all these different groups that have done a lot of harm to the black community but see we're doing their work for them lions then when we begin to harm ourselves kill ourselves and do things with no rich do these sort of things and hurt harm ourselves we're doing the job of the of the enemy for them by killing ourselves. So it's an unrighteous thing. Lions in, we gotta end this. I want to thank everybody for listening. Lions in, you have any last word before I before I end the podcast, the broadcast? Yeah, no final. Yeah, uh, is that the people of Chicago? Um, before I end this, my thoughts and prayers go to the family that lost their loved ones over the weekend. Okay, but but the thing I'm gonna say like this is that. Until we until we come together and clean our own mess, violence like this is going to continue to happen. Okay. And that's when I agree with you on one thing, Info. We can't blame not just the mayor. We got to blame ourselves, too. And that's the only way we can stop the violence. If, like I said in my video, okay. we need to talk it out, not shoot it out. And that's my final word. Okay, brother. Let me leave folks with these important words in 1995 by one Louis Farrakhan, the Million Man March. This is where we failed. This was what we, we keep talking about a code. This was a code that we failed to follow. A code that was laid out beautifully. And here it is. I say your name. Pledge that from this day forward. Everybody out there, thank you for listening to the broadcast. Thank you. Wait a minute, info. 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 Wait a minute, 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 info. Wait a minute, 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 Infiltrate with hate, knocking my little off my plate, but we do not take the pain, don't hesitate.